parents concerned with radiation with their children coming to the, the dental practice? How would you address that? Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a very common question. And, uh, and I think in the last five years, it's even more common. And I forecast that in the next five years, it's even to be even more common. And, and, and the reason is the media actually is providing to the parents a lot more information about radiation and a lot more information about, you know, the, 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 the potential issues connected with radiation. So parents, moms, dads, grandparents, when they come to the dental office, they are a lot more aware about radiation. So this is what I tell the parents. If I see x-rays walking around, I will go and hug and give a kiss. I love x-rays. And, and clearly, x-rays, they play a significant role in our lives, not just only in dentistry, in medicine, and in the food industry, and security industry. I mean, x-rays are clearly one of the biggest um, components or biggest players of our daily life. So this is what I tell the parents. First of all, I acknowledge to the parents that. I say, yes, you are right, your concerns are right, but I go through four or five different things that I do in my office to minimize as much as I can the amount of radiation and also to minimize the potential issues related with radiation. So number one, justification. I tell the parents, if I'm going to take an x-ray, it's because I clearly I have a why, which means that some of my kids, I may take one radiograph every two years, or maybe a couple of bite wings every three years. So justification must be the absolutely frame of a radiation safety champion office. You need to have a why. So I don't take radiographs at preset intervals. I don't do that. I don't tell my assistants, well, every patient, every six months, we need to take a radiograph. I don't do that. I do my, my exam first, and then based on my exam, I clearly decide if it's a justification. So that's the first thing. The second one is, I tell the parents in my office or in my in the university, we minimize as much as we can the retakes. And what I mean with that is, we do everything that we can, from the equipment to the training of the staff and to writing every time that we need to retake a film. We, we keep very close a logbook of all the retakes because that's opportunities for education. So I tell the parents, not just only we need to have a justification also in my office or at the university clinic, we are going to do everything that we can to minimize the retakes. I say minimize because even doing everything that we can, you know, some kids will move or some kids will have a gag reflex and they will. The third thing that we do in the office is we use the options in terms of digital radiology appropriately. What I mean with that is, we in digital radiology, we have two main modalities. One is what we call direct uh, sensors, which is a sensor connected with a cable to the computer. And the other one is indirect digital radiology, or also well known as phosphoroplates. So what I mean with that is, and I tell the parents in my office, I use both systems. And using both systems, we have the ability to really decide when is more appropriate to use sensors. Remember the sensors, as soon as you press the bottom, you see the image on the computer. But they are a little bit bigger, a little bit more bulky, sometimes difficult for the kid to have it in the mouth. And we have on the other hand the phosphoro plates that they look like a film, easy to place in the mouth. So for some kids, maybe the sensor will be the way to go. For some kids, maybe the phosphoro plates is the way to go. So, so far, three things. Justification, justification, justification. We minimize retakes, which means we keep a logbook. We use all the technology that we can to, to make the things easier and to avoid the retakes, like a handheld X-ray system. Number three, we use the technology appropriately. We look at phosphoro plates or we look at sensors according to the patient. At the end, and I will add one more, number four, which oh, we all do that as a dentist, is to make sure that our units are calibrated, that our units operate in the, in the norm that they're supposed to operate, that we kind of check that, uh, depending on the system that we use every year, or every two years, or whatever. So at the end, I, I tell the parents, if I look at your eyes and I tell you we need to take two bite wings, it's because I'm going through all these checkpoints. I need it because I have a justification. We are going to minimize as much as we can. 
We are going to use the proper technology for the size of the mouth of your kid. And finally, our office, we operate all the equipment with the perfect calibration and the perfect uh, maintaining that we're supposed to do. Now, I need to, sometimes parents, even after all these things, they look at me and say, no x-rays. So, now that's the space to be more creative and explain to the parents and, and look at other technologies, transillumination and look at other technologies that they may will help you to uh, look at that interproximal area that even with a loops 3x, I mean, you don't see that, especially, you know, in between uh, primary molars that they have a flat, pretty big contacts, it's difficult to see. So, you believe transillumination will help that? Transillumination, it has different potential indications, but um, at this point, one of the indications is clearly, um, you know, that resource for situations where x rays cannot be used. Parents who completely deny the use or completely reject the use of x-rays, but also more indications like a cracked teeth and things like that, that really will help in that situation. Okay.